Now, some kids and adults have dreamed of running away and joining the circus. Well, Chris Shelton really did it. He's been a Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey clown, a Wilmington cop, and a Ronald McDonald. How's that for a resume? Chris has written an autobiography, sort of a memoir about his life in and out of clowning. And here he is. The clown is in the house! But I am an old clown, so I hope you don't mind if I sit down to read tonight an excerpt from my book. And this is... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, this excerpt is all about... turn and sit in the seat. Oh, oh. It's okay, it's only expensive equipment. I was hoping you're still going to be sitting there for that. I'm oh, okay, thank you. I've got everything totally under control. Oh! Wait, wait, wait. I know what. I will balance a chair upside down on my chin, then I'll flip it back and land sitting in the seat. Sometimes a clown has to use his head. No, no, no. Sorry, guys. I had the right idea. I just didn't put it up high enough. All the way on top. Bow. Oops. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I know you can do it. Thank you. Thank you. And... <laughs> Uh, I'll forget the chair. Uh, I'm gonna. Re That's okay. I don't know if I need it anyway. I got a big mouth. Uh, this is called the change. Speaking of changes, the timing was perfect. The right elements were in place. All my seven brothers and sisters were out of the house. Considering we were all crammed into a three bedroom, one bathroom row house, my siblings found some other place, any place to go, every chance they could. Not me, I stayed. And I look forward to opportunities like this. Me and mom, me upstairs and mom sitting on the couch in the middle of the living room, studying for a test. I was busy working out all the details in my head. I took two deep breaths, which I need right now, burped once and started on my way. As I reached the hall at the top of the steps, I tripped and fell headfirst down the steps. I rolled all the way down, hit the bottom landing, sprawled out on the floor, and lay motionless. I waited, and I waited. I was very patient, but it never came. So I got up, brushed myself off, and said to my mother, I, I tripped on some clothes upstairs. I better go move them. As I ascended the steps, I was thinking to myself, so you want to play it that way, huh? I can step it up a notch, just wait. Mm -hmm. This time when I got to the top, I yelled out, who are you? Then I hit the banister as hard as I could with my open hand, making maximum noise. 
gave a faux painful yell. Ah! Then I threw myself down the stairs, rolling, rolling. Then just at the right time, I landed perfectly with both feet on the last step. Then I propelled myself across the landing and head first into the closet door, making a noise by kicking my foot against the bottom of the closet. I screamed out in pure agony and I fell onto my back. It was a masterpiece. Again, I waited. And again, nothing. Mom, I shouted, I could be dying here. Chris, please stop fooling around, said my mom in her nice, but where did I get such a crazy child voice? <laughs> you know that I need to study. Why don't you go out and play? So I sulked away and let her study in peace. But I didn't go outside. I went to go plan my next strategy for when she wasn't so busy. That's the way things went now, since the change. I, it had happened one year after President Kennedy was shot. I remember because we all sat around our wooden console radio, the whole family, and listened to the reports that came from Dallas. It was a shock, but it didn't change my way of thinking or how I was living my life. The change happened the same year that Sidney Poitier became the first African-American actor to win the Best Actor Oscar. That was cool, but it didn't change my life. It was the year the Beatles came to America. I remember watching them on Ed Sullivan, but it didn't change me. It was the year Mary Poppins opened. Still, no change. It was the year before Buster Keaton made the Samuel Beckett film called Film. But I hadn't yet realized the genius of the man in the flat hat, or that I was already starting to follow in his footsteps. Well, maybe not the genius part or even the fame part, but rather in the childlike love of falling down and making people laugh part. And it was the year that my father came out of the gym after playing handball with a couple of friends got into his car, started it up, and fell over dead of a heart attack at 48 years old. That changed everything. That's why I virtually became an agoraphobic for the next couple of years, to watch over, protect, shield, defend, guard my mom, and keep her from disappearing. And that is why I later became a police officer, and my true calling, a clown. <laughs> because there's no need to fear. Officer Offbeat is here. A finer juggling gesture of justice you will not meet this year. But I used to be a Wilmington cop. And before that, I performed under the Ringling Brothers Big Top. But now I've combined my professions and it is no rumor that I serve and protect with a sense of humor. <laughs> Wait, here comes my favorite. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. And yeah. That's a big after thing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We don't end on a drop. Should I try juggling on the unicycle? Yeah. This will be combining two different really cool tricks as I juggle on the unicycle. <laughs> what, what, I'm jumping on the... <laughs> all right, all right. I left myself enough room here. And... Oh! I didn't do it yet. There we go. I will juggle my foot! <laughs> Pretty good juggling, right? No, no, no. Oh, thank you, sir. You knew I was worried about that. All right. I will juggle the unicycle. Juggle, juggle, in a circle. Not landing on the drums. Juggle. No, I'll do it for real this time. Ready?